Monday. So excited to be in here with you all today. Let me adjust my desk a little bit. Welcome, welcome. If you are actually joining me live for this six figure mindset talk we're going to have, um, let me know in the comments and say hello. I want to see who all is here. So drop your name in the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Welcome to our live chat and welcome to the community. If you're newer to the brand photographer community, I started this, oh my gosh, how many years ago? Maybe like two and a half years ago, this community started. Maybe it's been three and a half. I got to look into that. Um, but really just like a place where we can come as brand photographers to talk about the business, about brand photography and offering brand photography and how you really get started if you're new to the industry. And that's what I want to talk about today. And I actually created some space to go live with you all the next couple Mondays so we can talk about six figure mindset. I thought we could talk about planning a brand session. And also just like if you are a new brand photographer, or this is something you're wanting to offer in your business, like where do you start, right? Like what are the systems? What are the best like ways to use your energy now to really attract the clients you want to work with? I'd love to talk about that and just any questions that you all have. So if you're joining, say hello in the chat. Yay, let me just take a look and see if anybody has said hello. Let me know where you are joining me from. I would love to see who is tuned in live. And I wanna just get going actually while we're waiting for people to hop in, waiting for any questions to come through. So I've been wanting to go live for a while with you all. And as you may know, I'm a newer, a new mom. <laughs> I have a, 20 oh my gosh 23 he's almost 23 months now almost two years so he's almost two years old and then i have a four month old son both boys so i'm a boy mom and so i haven't been going live in here as much um but i would love to make more time to connect with you all because how cool is it that we can connect from all over the world with other photographers hello ashley yay i'm so glad you could join um how cool is it that we can connect with other brand photographers in our industry like this is the first time ever that we have like so many ways we can reach out to people who are doing what we want to do who are you know who have created the business that we want as photographers and we can learn from each other we can grow with each other i've seen so many people in this group over the last couple years grow like from just starting their brand photography business to now being full-time thriving, you know, brand photographers. A lot of you have already hit the six figure mark. I know in this group, maybe some of you are going for that still. And you know, this is not just if you want to hit six figures, right? Like we can have a really successful business hitting $5,000 a month. I know that was my first goal as a brand photographer was to get to that like $5,000 a month and do that consistently over and over again. And in order to do that, <laughs> there were some like shifts that had to happen in my mindset. So I don't know who here is full-time brand photographer. Let me know if you're already full-time or if you are, um, if you are still like part and wanting to go full-time. Full so there's a, there's like a shift that happens, right? Like as a CEO, we have to expand our capacity to like run a business, to think like a business owner. And I know when we first start as photographers or freelancers, we don't have like all the business savvy yet. We haven't like really understood and grasped what it takes to run a business. <laughs> I think some of us, like so many of us get into this being so naive of like, oh, I love photography and I'm just gonna go take photos and edit them and boom, I have my business and that's all I have to do. And we forget about all the, like, we don't know, right? We go into this like blind, let me know if you can relate, but you just like, you have this beautiful vision of being a photographer, photographer full time because you love what you do and you wanna capture people and then you're like, oh wow, I have to learn how to run a business. <laughs> 
so that's what I kind of wanted to talk about today. Um, Ashley said she considers herself part-time. Yeah, momming is her full-time job. Yeah, and so like that's a whole nother job. Like if you have a family and you are, you know, raising humans, that is maybe your number one priority. So how can we still grow our business while raising humans, while having maybe another full-time job? I want you to know it's possible. When I first started my business, I was working at a restaurant. I was working at a restaurant like five, six days a week, like, and I was commuting like pretty far to get there from where we lived. Like it was like really some days an hour commute each way to get to this restaurant. And I was trying to start my photography business at the same time. And I remember just like being at the restaurant, I was working in the cafe with like making coffee for people and me just desiring to like clock out like when when is my shift over I would watch the clock it's time would move so slow because I just wanted to get home and work on my photography business like I was so passionate and I my heart was all in my heart was all in I was like I'm gonna make this happen right like if you're watching this I know your heart's all in and you're like I am going to create this business like no matter what I have to do and I want to talk about like in the beginning we do there is there is this like time where we have to hustle. There is moments of hustle in our business. And I am very much now that I'm a mom and my energy and my capacity is really limited to actually like do work and run my business. I have a lot less time than when I started. And so the way that's looked for me like over the years is like, I have seasons of hustle. Like when I first was getting my business going, like I hustled my way to six figures, okay? You can absolutely hustle your way to six figures. People do it all the time. The only thing with that is it's not sustainable. And that's why you hear people who, you know, have these really successful businesses and they've hit like, you know, six figures or they've been full time in their business for years and they've had a full schedule of clients, but then they go out of business or they quit. And a big reason why is because they haven't really set the structures. They haven't created like sustainability in their business. And I love talking about that. I love talking about systems. I'm all about it, all about my spreadsheets <laughs> because I've had to create these systems so I can keep having a six figure business. I'm in year four of having a six figure photography business and I have been able to consistently hit five figure months in my business because of systems that I have, because of mindset shifts I've had to make. So I wanna talk about that a little bit today. Uh, I feel like I'm already going on tangent. Let me take a sip of my coffee, <laughs> refocus. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Um, if you're here, will you just say hello in the comments so I can see who's watching? Let me know if you have any questions. It doesn't have to be related to mindset. Uh, and what we're talking about today, but today our theme is really about like the shifts you need to make in your mindset to have that sustainable six figure business. Um, so the first thing is like really stepping into that like CEO business owner mindset instead of the freelancer employee mindset. So this is a shift, right? Like whether you came from you know, working full time for someone else in like a corporate job, or maybe you've been doing this a while, but you're still kind of like in that freelancer mindset where you're trading time for money and you're feeling like you're just always busy and you're never getting anywhere. Like you're never actually profiting enough to pay yourself. Like one shift I had to make when stepping into being a business owner, well, there's like my whole life had to change, right? Like, I feel like stepping into, when you become a business owner, it's like an ego death. It's an ego death. Because all of a sudden you're humbled and you're like forced to look at yourself. You're forced to like look at the things that have been holding you back in your life or you're forced to look at like your own flaws because they really come out when you're running a business and you have to make some shifts. You, your ego has to die a little bit. You have to understand that I don't have all the answers. I'm not perfect. I have a lot of room for growth. I need to learn time management. I need to learn money mindset. I need to learn how to manage my money, how to manage a business. And I realize I don't know as much as I thought. I have to learn contracts. I have to figure out, out that. I have to figure out how to set up a CRM, like all these 
new technologies you have to learn. Like I have to make an email list now. I have to market myself. And it, it can be a lot. It can be really overwhelming if you're just thinking about everything at once. Um, and if, you know, and yeah, and that's where like really having like some systems and some structure is really, really helpful. And at the end of this live, I am, I do want to share with you, I'm offering an eight week group program coming up called foundation. And some of you might have my confident brand photographer course that's included in foundation, but I want to share this with you in case you're really looking for a system or something that's going to really help support you creating those like back end systems and creating that brand client experience, creating, you know, the perfect brand client questionnaire, creating the honey book workflows that you're going to need to really like fully step into running a business. And I love helping people create these systems because systems have really freed up so much time for me in my life. And since I became a business owner and it's why I've been able to continue to have six figure years. And at this point I work much less and I work a lot. I work, no, I don't want to say I work less, although it's true. I do a lot less. I do work a lot less hours on client work every week than I used to, to hit the same numbers because of how I have systems. But what it is, is the work flows more. It's, it's, I don't hustle. I'm out of my like season of hustle where it, it's like I used to be in that season and now it's like my business just kind of flows. It's more of a flow. And I don't want to knock hustle, like going back to hustle, I don't want to knock hustle because hustle can really serve you. You know, hustle is in the beginning, I did hustle. In the beginning, I did like everything I could to build the business and I was being in action. Being in action is so important when we are really going after a big dream, like a full-time, having your business as a full-time photographer, like there is seasons that you're going to have to hustle. Like, I don't want to sit here and tell you it's easy and you can just like manifest this business because it does take a lot of action and it does take seasons of hustle, but you don't want to like live in that hustle forever, right? You want to know that like, okay, I'm going to hustle until I feel my, you know, have a full roster of clients you know, 12 clients for this next quarter. And then I'm just going to sit back and take it easy and really work on the business and, you know, work on what I need to do to grow as a CEO, as a leader, as an amazing brand photographer. I'm going to take time to do that too. So I want to see what's coming in through the comments. Yvette, hello. Thanks for joining us. Would love to hear more about your systems. Yeah, let's talk about systems. I love it. Northern California. Ooh, where in, where in Northern Cali? Would love to know. I'm in San Diego down here. Uh, and Ashley says, speaking of systems, when it comes to systems, I feel like I'm all, I overcomplicate it so much. I end up giving, I, giving up on them. What's the secret to simplifying yet making them effective? Yeah. So the secret to doing that is just to start and be in action. <laughs> Like there is no like magic wand where you can you can wave a magic wand and your whole business is just like there's my six figure business right it does take like the work and that's where you know the seasons of hustle come into play and maybe like your first goal is for you to set up like your invoicing system and get that set up and like you really just focus 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 in on that system for a while until you have it set up and it's going and then you focus on the next one and the next one and what's really helped me is focusing on like one thing at a time focusing on one thing at a time getting it done and then moving on to the next thing but really you know being in action is such an underrated thing because i see a lot of photographers when they're first starting their business you're excited and like you're in action for a while and you're going all out for like a month and then you stop for three weeks like and a lot of that has to do with um, when you are in that hustle, like especially as like a solopreneur, like most likely if you're watching this, like most of us are pretty much solopreneurs running a service-based business. That's a lot. And so you, in that, even if you have some things you outsource, that's great. I have a whole team, but I'm still ultimately like the one 
like the one person right now i don't have an associate photographer team who goes and shoots for me so i am the one solo owner of the business and like the one who fulfills everything the one who goes and does the photo shoots the one who does the client work so when you have that type of business like it's so easy to get burned out right because you might you might know the system you need to set up right like oh i know i need to like get better contracts and get my honey book set up my workflow set up i know i need to have a brand questionnaire that just automatically sends out to the client so i don't have to send that email but i just don't have time like i'm just i'm editing i'm working and so this is where like the shifts like the mindset shift comes into play of like you want to spend majority of your time in growth growth focused activities in your business so one thing um i would love to know from those of you watching if you had to divide your time into three categories as a CEO, and one is client work and fulfillment. So that's like planning the photo shoot, you know, doing the photo shoot, driving, editing the photos, downloading the photos, calling the photos, like making the galleries, all the actual like fulfillment work that we do as photographers. How much of your time percentage wise would you say you're spending doing that out of 100%? like in a given week or a given month, how much of your time is going to client work? I'm curious, is it 20%, 50%, is it like 75% of your time is probably spent doing the photo shoot, editing all the client work? What are your numbers? Write that down and put it in the chat if you're watching. And if you're watching the replay, I'd love to know. Client work equals what percent for you? When I first started, my client work was like in that first year where I really got that momentum going and I was starting to book people and I was working a lot in the business. And some months I was even doing like 12 to 15 photo shoots, <laughs> which I look back now and like 15 days, shooting 15 days of the month is a lot. That's a lot of work. Like now as a mom, I could not do that. <laughs> I do not have the energy to do 15 photo shoot days a month. There's just no way. Um, but in the beginning I was, and so my client fulfillment was probably like, oh my gosh, I want to say like at least 50%, oops, no, I would say like 60% of my time was client work. Okay. 60% of my time was going to client work. And in terms of the rest of the time, I would say 30% was going towards admin work so what percent so you have your client work what percent are you like putting into your clients right now your actual fulfillment as a service provider photographer and then what percent is going into your admin work so admin work is sending invoices um, making appointments checking emails doing accounting you know sending your statements to your bookkeeper or doing that yourself doing taxes setting up contracts in your business, even doing like setting up the workflows for HoneyBook in your business or making a brand questionnaire that you're going to send out. Like all of that is admin work. And I would love to know like what percentage of your time is, is going to admin work. So for me in the beginning, it was like probably like a lot of admin work, 30, 40% of my time. And then like 50 to 60% was client work. So that was like most of my time, <laughs> like when I started to get really busy. Um, in the beginning, you might not have this yet, but if you're just starting in brand photography and you haven't booked a lot of clients yet, and it's a little slower season for you, you might have some more time, but imagine once you really get going, you know, being this solo entrepreneur in order to fulfill these photo shoots and deliver an amazing product, like it's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. Um, and so then I would say the rest of my time, the other category you want to consider is growth. I'm going to call it CEO growth, your CEO work. So in the beginning, this is what it looked like for me. 60%, most of my time was going to the client work, the photo shoots, you know, 30% was going to admin work and about 10%, the leftover time I was actually spending growing the business. Okay. So that would be like going to networking events. That would be like doing Facebook lives. Like maybe if you have a Facebook for your clients, you manage, or you you're like, want to be a guest in someone else's Facebook to really promote your services or on a podcast. Like that's considered like growth. 
um, any kind of marketing, outreach, posting on social media, launching something, emailing your list, that's considered really growth activities. So as the CEO, this is not good. <laughs> if I look at where my numbers used to be, it, in that first like hustle year to six figures, I call it my hustle year where I was really hustling to get to the six figures. And yeah, I did it, but this is how I did it. I was spending so much time on client work. I was spending a lot more time on admin stuff than I should have been spending. And I barely had actual time left over to work on the business and really like go to those events, make those connections with people you know, um, invest in my education and my own mindset. Again, like we really have to always be thinking like growth. We, we need to make space for that next level. And like, we need to make space to actually have a sustainable six figure business. Not, we can't always hustle every year to get to six figures because it's not sustainable. So now like, I'm curious what these numbers look like for you. So Ashley said 15%. She said, I'm a thinker, not a doer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, exactly. It's like we can think all day about the strategy. We can think all day about like creating the systems, creating the HoneyBook perfect workflow. But like we need to eventually like just sit down and take action and do it. Right. Like where, 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 do, when do we actually like finally say, okay, I'm ready to be in action moving forward and to really step into that CEO mindset of like in the six figure mindset of being a business owner. You know, I'm ready to raise my prices because that's part of that mindset. Um, because, you know, if you, you came from like a salary job, you know, $50 an hour sounds great or like $500 for a photo shoot. If you're coming from like a salary job or you have that freelancer mindset and you're trading time for money, then $500 sounds like a lot, right? $500 is great. I remember making $200 on my first photo shoot and I was so ecstatic. I was like, oh my gosh, I have a business. Like I'm charging money for to take photos and people are paying me $200 a photo shoot. But I that's because I didn't have like the mindset I have now. I didn't know that that's not sustainable. Like that's not going to allow me to really thrive as a photographer and create a really great business and service for my clients at $200, right? So I had to raise my prices and, you know, even $500, I remember felt like so much money to get paid $500 to have a brand photography business. But ultimately, like if you do want to make six figures and if you're watching this, you probably do, you have big dreams and aspirations. Like you have big goals, that's why you're here. Like if you wanna hit that six figure mark, $500 a shoot is not gonna cut it, right? Because at $500 a shoot, I'd have to do 400 photo shoots, 400 photo shoots at $500 a shoot to hit 200,000 a year and really profit, you know, 100,000 to pay myself 100,000. Cause that's another shift we have to make really stepping into a business owner mindset is that we have to pay, we, t we pay taxes, we have expenses to run the business, we, we need to pay people for outsourcing things and we wanna you know, continue to grow and be sustainable. So 50% of our money, we might not be keeping at the end of the day. So if you do the math, that's 400 photo shoots at $500 a year, that's a lot. 400 clients a year I'd have to find and do like over a photo shoot a day to really like profit well and pay myself a six figure salary. Like, wow. Okay. We quickly realize, right. We need to raise our prices. So throughout the years I've like made that shift into, okay, this is a business Meg. Like this isn't just like a hobby. I'm not just a freelancer who's like trading time for money. No, I have a business I need to run. I have taxes, I have expenses. I have people that are waiting to, for me to pay them. Like I need to, you know, pay. And so it's making that shift into like owning that I have a business and as a business, this is how much I need to charge to survive. So it's, it's making that shift from $500 photo shoots to a higher price point that you can actually sustain long-term. And that way, you know, you're not having to find 400 clients a year 
to hit your goals, you're actually only having to find 40, let's say. Like, doesn't that feel so much easier to find 40 clients a year versus 400 clients a year? So these are the type of shifts that you start to make like the longer you're in business because you realize like, oh, okay, this is nice. I've hustled my way to really successful business and this is not sustainable. Like, and I'm gonna burn out or maybe you already have felt like you're burning out. So let's see what's coming in. Yeah, so I would love to, like if you're tuning in, we were just talking about just like the three buckets that our time goes you know, as photographers and starting to think about starting to shift, like how much time you're putting into each bucket. So we have like your client work and then we have in fulfillment and then we have your admin work and then we have your CEO growth focused work. So mine used to look like 60, 30, 10%. Now I'm happy to report <laughs> my client, all my client work to run my six figure business takes me about 10 hours a week, 10 to 12 on average. I'd say 12 hours client work a week or less. No, actually 10, more like 10 now because I do more half days than full days now. 10 hours a week on client work. And so percentage wise, I'm working about 30 hours a week. So that's that's a lot better, right? That's 30%. 30% of my time now goes to client work. And then it used to be 60%. So I've cut that in half like over the years. And part of that is, and then with admin work, only about 5% or less of my time goes to admin. And part of that is I do have, you know, a team now. I do have people that I outsource work to like emails, invoicing, like I don't do all that stuff anymore. And so that's allowed me to free so much time to where that's only 35% of my time. It used to be 90% of my time was going to client work, admin work. And now I have this extra time like to do things like this. And I mean, I love coaching. If you know me, you probably know I love coaching photographers. I love helping people build businesses, like coaching you on how to build the business. I have group programs, I have courses, and that's a huge passion of mine that I now have time for. I didn't have that time before to create like passive income courses or create fun programs like this for photographers because I was using all my time for client work, but now I have the time. So that's where some of my time goes. And then the other just 65% of my time is spent in growth, CEO growth activities and or like coaching for me because I love coaching photographers. But like look at that shift. Like I was spending 60% of my time and 30%, 60% of my time on client work, 30% on admin. That was 90% of my time was going, just working, working in the business and never feeling like I had a lot of space to grow the business and create the systems. And to answer Ashley's question from earlier, like how do you actually make time to do it? Again, you just be in action and you start with one thing at a time and you Remind yourself, okay, right now I'm spending this much time doing these things. And if I just spent a little more time like working on the business, setting up the systems, I'm going to free up so much more time and I'm going to then have more time to put back into growth. So it's an interesting shift we have to just step into and make. It's this trust exercise of, okay, if I prioritize this one thing, even though it's boring, like setting up my automated calendar system for clients to just book calls with me and then putting that link in my Instagram bio and making a landing page and blah, blah, blah. Even though that's super time consuming and I don't feel like doing it and I don't know how to do it maybe, I know if I, when I take the time to do this, it's only going to help me grow. It's only going to help me attract that next level client who wants that full service. It's going to help me show up with more energy to serve that person. It's going to help me really show up and give a better product and a better experience for the client. And it's going to all work full circle to help me reach like that big number, my big goal that I'm going towards. So it's just very important to just assess, like do an assessment. Where am I spending my time right now? And how can you spend less of your time in client work and admin work and spend more of your time 
in like the growth activities, going to networking events. And right now in the beginning, I would say like, even though it's technically admin to like be setting up your workflows and setting up like calendar links or setting up your brand questionnaire for clients, I would almost in the beginning say that's actually CEO growth work. Cause like it is something you could hire somebody to do. Like if you do have extra funds right now and you're feeling like blocks around doing it yourself, you could absolutely hire it out, but you can also do it yourself. And taking that time to put in to build the foundation of your business now and the foundation of like your client experience now and creating a planning process for your brand clients that you're gonna serve, like doing all that now and having it ready to go is gonna really serve you long-term wise and save you so much time. I do wanna talk about automation more like on our next live next week because automation has been everything to helping me grow, helping me like create a sustainable business, helping me go from spending 90% of my time doing client work, working in the business, doing admin work to now it's down to like thir only 35% of my time is spent there. And it's because of the systems. It's because of like the automation we can talk more about. I'm, I'm looking to see if anyone else has commented. I don't know if I'm getting an update. Any questions on this so far? What are your thoughts? What's coming up for you? Are there any blocks coming up for you as you hear me just share my thoughts about like the six figure mindset? What's coming up for you? Is there any part of you that's like, oh yeah, that's great for you, Meg, but you know, I've tried this and it's not working or I don't have time to do that or I don't know how to do that or just like general questions coming up. Would love to know. I wanna go back to this topic too of like the ego death. <laughs> the ego death that happens as we step into being business owners, full-time business owners. Um, I remember my first unhappy client. I'll never forget that moment. And I've had two people now out of over 300 photo shoots that have not been completely happy with the experience or the final product. And that's because there was what I, pro I over promised and I under delivered for these people. And so they weren't happy. And I remember feeling like so attacked that first like negative feedback I got from a client and feeling like, oh my gosh, like I'm a horrible photographer and this just isn't for me. And like, I can't do this. And I, re I just, it was really hard. Like I cried, I definitely cried and I felt awful about myself and I took it very personal. Whereas now I realized the client was not attacking me at all and they were not upset with me at all. And it was no reflection of me as a person. It was just that as a business owner, this is where you have to put your business hat on. Like as a business owner, I realized, okay, like I did not fulfill what I promised. And, and what was the reason to that? Like, why didn't I fulfill what I promised? And why was I not able to make this person happy and i had to really like put my ego aside and think like more of a business owner right as businesses we want to get feedback as businesses feedback is the most valuable thing you can get as a business owner to really grow your business because it's going to tell you so much about what might need to shift in like your client experience with those final images that you're delivering like what might need to evolve for you to really step into that next level. So it's good when we get feedback, even like negative feedback. Um, and there's not really any negative feedback. It's how we interpret it, right? It's, it's usually just some, it's just information that we can take in and we can say, okay, like, what does this mean? What else does this mean? Does it, is there something that I could do differently next time to avoid this happening again? So that's like one example of an ego death I've had to go through while building my business of just saying, okay, I want feedback and I'm open to even hearing negative feedback. If it means that like, I'm going to be able to improve my client experience, improve my business, improve as a photographer and 
and make my clients happy at the end of the day, right? Ashley's like, I can't pinpoint my block, but I know I have one. Yeah, I mean, even just being open to be like, what is my block? Like, why have I not created this photography business I've been dreaming about for so long? Like, what is it? And even just asking that question and then being open for like what comes through can really serve you, Ashley. And being like, I wanna know my block. I don't know what it is yet, but I, I'm open. I'm open to discovering like what it is and where I need to focus my time and energy in, um, on. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and then the other part of like, oh, the other part of ego death, okay. So one thing that really helped me as a beginning photography photographer really go full time is I was open to getting feedback on my portfolio. And you've maybe heard me talk about this before, but my first year, I actually like sought out other photographers that I could go work with and like shadow and learn from. And I did research. I went to like their Facebook group page and um, their business page and their Instagram. And I found photographers who were doing what I wanted to do, who had a portfolio that I thought was beautiful, that I was aspiring to get to. Um, and I reached out to them and I asked like, hey, what can I help you with in your business? Like, can, do you need an assistant? I even offered to assist for free. Like that's how hungry I was. And again, like I, we don't always see like how much work and hustle went into people's businesses. But for me, like in that first year I was hustling, like, and I was still working the full-time job at the restaurant and I was still commuting a long time, but I found a way to somehow like go assist these other photographers. Some of them I even paid. There was a photographer I paid to go assist them, which is just wild when I think about it. Um, but I was willing to do that because I like, that's how bad I really wanted to learn. And that's how hungry I was. And these portfolio reviews I got from one of my mentors, every photo shoot I would do, whether it was a paid photo shoot with a client or just like a fun play photo shoot, me practicing with my camera, with a friend, like I would have him review every photo shoot and give me feedback on the images. And he would just go through my raw images and he would just say, here's how you can improve. Here's how I would have shot this. Here's why I would not have chose that background. Here's what I would have done differently. And that was so, so helpful. Like, and it was like an ego death because there were images where I was like, I'm so excited about this photo. Isn't it amazing? And he would just like pick it apart and essentially be like, actually, no, it's not amazing. <laughs> he wouldn't say that, but he would be like, here's what actually would make it better. Like, here's here's why I would do this and why I wouldn't do this. And just like getting this feedback and being open for feedback, being open to grow, being open for, I don't have all the answers, like I don't know everything yet and I wanna learn more. That's what really got me to where I am now. Like I got so much feedback and I got so much support from not just photographers, but business coaches as well. Like I have, I have hired business coaches over the years because for me, I'm someone that needs that accountability and like needs that support to continue to grow. And, and I need, I love the mindset shifts, like being in a community like this or being in a mastermind or working with a coach. I love the mindset shifts that offers for you. Um, uh, every week I'm asking my coach something or I'm having like a shift around something in my business that maybe I was doing it one way or maybe I was feeling a block around taking action somewhere and then they help guide me to like what I need to do next. Like what, it, what it's, it's great to just like look at what's holding you back. And like I just told Ashley, like even just like asking the question, what is blocking me? She, and then Ashley said, I think what you said about the negative feedback might be a big part of it. Yeah, like that was, that's a huge block for so many people. Like to get to that next level is like, we don't want to put ourselves out there because we don't want to get the negative feedback. We, we have a fear that we're gonna, people are not going to like us or people are going to judge us or like people are not going to like our photography or people are going to judge us for being a business owner or for going after our dreams, or maybe they're going to judge us for posting this 
post on social media. Like there's so many ways that, yeah, like, again, this is ego death, Ashley. This is perfect. Thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing that. And this just shows, Ashley, the fact that you're here on this live, like you're commenting, you're in it. You're like looking at yourself and taking time to ask these questions. Like you're in it, girl. You're taking the action forward. Like this is, this is what it is. This is what it takes to like get to your next level and like have that full-time successful business is just keep showing up and taking action like this and like looking at yourself and yeah being open to like i'm i'm not perfect and that's okay like even maybe you will post something maybe you will do a photo shoot that a client's not happy with maybe that'll happen and like they won't be happy with their photos can you be okay with that can you be okay with like putting yourself out there and risking it and being open to getting that rejection. And I know it's super hard because <laughs> I love it. She's washing dishes and changing diapers. Yeah. And you're still showing up. It's perfect. It's so perfect. And it, it's like the journey to like that full-time business, it looks different for everybody, right? Like you're a mom and oh my gosh, like I, I get it girl. Like I can't imagine like if I was starting my business now and my goal was to like go full time in my brand photography business and this was year one as a mom, whew, it would look so different for me. And so it's smart that you're actually having this conversation now. Like I wish five years ago, Meg, when I was starting, there's so many things I wish I knew then. And like it's some of what we talked about today. Like I wish I had really focused on how can I free up my time? How can I like create systems to free up my time? How can I, and that's what, you know, you can be doing, Ashley. Like, how can I um, do that so that I have, I'm spending less time on admin work and I'm spending more time in my zone of genius and spending more time doing like growth activities, like as the business owner. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I talking about? I went on a tangent. What was I talking about? I don't, I don't know. Any final questions? Ooh, Allison, hello. Yeah, she's like, momming and CEOing is a beast. Yeah, girl, you know. But look at you. I've seen you come so far just since I've known you in like the last three years, like four years you started your business. And now you're, I know you're more than full time. I know you have like probably a long wait list, right, Allison? Do you have a wait list to work with you? Or like, are you booked out a few months right now? with your boudoir photography. I know you started as like with the intention to do all brand photography and then you you felt you found boudoir and you fell in love and I think you still do some brand photography, right? Like you do both as far as I know, but I'm loving your boudoir work. And that's what's fun too. It's like we get to we get to evolve, we get to change our mind. Like maybe you started with one type of photography or you have this like idea of what like your business would look like, this amazing business you wanted to build and now it looks differently. And now you have other goals, you have other visions, you have other dreams and desires. So it's like leaning into that. Um, yeah, Allison said she surpassed her teaching income this year. Woo, amazing girl and booked the rest of, you're booked the rest of 2022. That's amazing. I knew it. I knew you were like booked out a few months. And yeah, she does both. She does boudoir and some branding. I love, I love seeing your work, Allison. Um, yeah, so it's like our business changes and evolves. So it, that's also part of like just having that mindset, that CEO mindset, six figure mindset is like being open for new ideas to come in, being open to innovate and like change, you know, we set up structures in our business. Like we set this amazing client experience up. We get to like create the planning session and the brand questionnaire and do all the things. And then we get to change and evolve. And like, I know like some of you might have the confident brand photographer course, and this is what you'll get. You do get the course. If you end up wanting to join my foundation, my eight week pro, eight week group program that I'm starting soon. I wanna invite you if you're feeling called to have support around like building the, your business, building these systems, like starting your brand photography business as like, especially as a new brand photographer, I wanna invite you because the course is gonna walk you through exactly how to do that. And you can get the course anytime, 
But if you sign up now, one, you get a discount, so you get to save money on the course, and you're getting like a bonus eight week group coaching program with me. So you're just getting so much more support. Like you're getting more accountability and support to just start to just finally get in there and like set up these systems now. Um, yeah. So it's like, I don't know where I was going with that. I always go on tangents. <laughs> I just kind of hopped on here today. I was like, let me just like rant on some things and just kind of, what else did I have on my list? I think that's pretty good to end here. We talked about like, you know, the CEO mindset and kind of shifting from like being an employee or freelancer into actually being a full-time business owner and kind of something like what that looks like. And I love talking about the time, the buckets, like where you put your time. Is it going into client work? Is it going into admin? Is it going into growth activities? And start starting to think about shifting like your mindset and shifting your energy and time into more of the growth CEO focused activities and out of like doing all the work by yourself. And this is one more thing I wanted to mention is like, there's so many things I wish I had known that I'd do differently now. Looking back like to that first year when I did like hustle my way to six figures, <clears throat> what I wish is that I had hired support right away. And that, and even if that was like in the beginning, it probably only would have been five or 10 hours a month. Like that's what I could have afforded maybe at $30 an hour for an admin person, you know, $300 a month. Like I wish I had made that investment though, when I started to get busy and when things were like crazy in my business, because that would have freed up maybe 10 hours a month for me, them doing all those, you know, invoices and client communication and things that, anybody can do, it would have freed up time for me to spend 10 hours more in my zone of genius or working on like things that are going to move my business forward or posting on social media a few more times or doing that launch or, you know, finally starting the email list, like learning how to do an email list. Like I could have spent those 10 hours doing things that would have like moved the needle forward a lot faster. Um, that's one thing I wish I knew and I would encourage you to do if you haven't yet, even if it's five hours a month, or even if you get like an intern, there's a lot of like colleges who they offer like internship programs, or they could help you in your photography business for school credit. There's so many ways we can get support. Like, and in terms of like having a sustainable, like six figure business, especially if you want to pay yourself six figure paycheck, you're going to need support. Like you're, you're just going to need it, especially if you're a mom, like, or a parent, a dad, like, like we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> this is like, oh my gosh, the biggest like shift stepping into this new identity as a parent for me is like, oh, I have no time anymore. I have like no time to myself. And I've had to really hire more support get a nanny that's the only reason i'm here with you all today is because i have a nanny now who helps with the boys like i've had to really lean into getting support and it just started with five hours a month and then it was 10 hours a month and it was 20 hours a month and then it was outsourcing these three things and then it was like getting childcare, and it was like one thing after the other helped me free time so i could really be in that like ceo mode zone of genius and attract better clients, create a better experience for them, um, get better at my craft. And then I would, and then I charge more money. And it's, it's like this snowball effect, right? When we start getting support in our business, when we start stepping into like being the CEO, when we start, you know, making these shifts and we just stay in action and we're in action and we're in action and we just take one step after the other, it starts to snowball. We start to get that momentum um, and things start to fall into place, which is really, really cool. Um, Allison says, Ooh, someone recently said to me, if you went viral tomorrow and you had 200 inquiries in your inbox, could your systems handle it? And my answer was no. Setting up the systems you're mentioning was huge for me. Yeah. Like we need systems. It's so true. It's like a lot of people are like, Oh, I just want to get like, I just want to get inquiries. I just want to get new clients. And then like all my problems will be solved. If I just book like five new clients a month, 10 new clients a month, like everything will be great. 
But that's a great question to like gut check yourself. What Allison said is like, well, what if you did get like 30 new inquiries in a month and assuming your closing rate is like around 30%, that's actually a really good closing rate. Then you were booking 10 of those 30. So that's 30 new people you need to be getting back to and providing this amazing experience for an amazing sales process for and then an amazing like onboarding booking process and then an amazing client experience once they become a client yeah like do you have the systems in place like could you do it um so if you're all in and you're like i'm all in meg like i'm gonna build my photography business like i'm gonna stay in action and do what it takes like just know like this is part of it you are gonna need the systems you are gonna need to like start to shift your time into like in freeing up your time to have space to set these things up and to really like provide an incredible experience and deliver that incredible experience. We don't, we don't want to, we never want to over promise and under deliver. And I've been there, I've done it a couple times and it's not fun, but you learn a lot of lessons. <laughs> you learn a lot of lessons when that happens, right? Thank you all for joining. If you, could, if you join live and if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. Um, I just want to invite you now, if you are interested in having support and having like a group, a little mastermind as you're setting up your brand photography business and starting to offer this to clients, I have my signature confident brand photographer course that hundreds of you have already been through in this community. Thank you for that. And now, if you want to join now, what you're going to get is you get a discount plus you get the group program. So I haven't offered this group program often, um, but I've created more space because like I know it's so valuable to have like accountability and support as you go through a course. So you actually do it. So you actually set up the system. So you actually have more support to ask questions as you go. If something's not super clear. Um, you know, I'm going to be there guiding you. We're going to have Zoom calls where you get to ask me anything. And the intention is it, it'll, it'll be a small group. I'll probably cap it like when we hit a certain number so that we do have time for everyone's questions on the calls. Um, and yeah, I'll drop more information in the chat about that. I'll drop the link in if you want to take, take a look at that. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for showing up. I'm going to do another one next Monday. So if questions come up over the next week on some of this stuff and you want to join me Monday, I would love to see you Monday. Um, I think our theme that I was going to talk about is like client experience. Yeah, like the brand client experience. Like what does that look like? The brand client experience start to finish. I'd love to share some of mine and answer any questions you have about that. So I will see you next week. Thank you. Have a great day.